Hi, this is Justin with Kind LED Grow Lights. Uh, today we're performing a comparison test with the major competitors in the LED horticultural light market. Uh, and these are the major competitor lights that we bump into in the marketplace. Um, this is the Lush uh, Dominator 2XL from Lush Lighting. This is the Solar Storm 880 from California Lightworks. This is the Black Dog Platinum XLU. And this is the Lumigro Pro 650. And in the middle we have the Kind LED XL1000. So the way we're going to perform our tests is to hang each of the lights at distances from the ground of 24, 36, and 48 inches. And at each of those heights take a set of measurements with our photometric instruments here at a center point on an inner ring of data points and then on a far outer ring from the uh, center of the board. We're going to be averaging all the data points to get an average reading of PAR and then we'll also be showing the average readings on the inner and outer rings. Alright, let's take a look at the instruments we're going to be using to perform this test. This is a PAR meter, another tool from Sun Systems. This is an important measurement for measuring grow lights for plants because it actually quantifies how much light is being emitted by the light source that is going to affect the photosynthesis of the plants. The photosynthetically active radiation spectrum is something scientists have been studying for the last 100 or 200 years. The McCree curve is the curve that scientists found back when they were first studying the photosynthetic action of plants uh, that is where the PAR spectrum gets its name. Finally, our most important tool of the toolkit is the spectrometer from UPR Tech. We use it to analyze and show us all of the different colors uh, being emitted by a light source and it's very necessary and the most important tool for evaluating the performance of a horticultural light because we want to see exactly the levels and ratios of each color and the entire range of colors including colors that are outside of the visible range of the human eye ultraviolet and infrared this is a very necessary tool because the human eye can't perceive these colors when you look at a red and a blue diode together you just see purple but the spectrometer can show you exactly how much red and exactly how much blue is there. This is the most definitive measurement you can take uh, with regard to predicting how your plants are going to respond to a light source. Now we'll collect our data. We're also going to be taking a set of photometric measurements with a 600 watt and a 1000 watt high pressure sodium bulb because of course this is what growers are using in their grow rooms now to grow plants and we want to know for our own use uh, how our lights compare. Um, let's go take those measurements. We have one additional entrant into our competition. Uh, this is the Spider 1200 from BML Horticulture. Uh, recently started LED company out of Texas that's gotten some attention because of some YouTube videos that were pretty entertaining. Uh, we're going to do the same round of tests that we did for all the other lights on this fixture. These are the conclusions drawn from our data set. In this test, we take a set of spectral readings from traditional grow lights as well as the most well-known brands of LED grow lights on the market. While a few of these lights had positive results in some areas, by the end of the study it was clear to see why Kind LED won the award from HT Magazine for best LED grow light for the last two years in a row. Besides having features that no other light can match, it dramatically outperforms the competition in photometric analysis. PAR is the range of colors of light which plants use the most for photosynthesis. As you can see, the spectral outputs of these lights are different, and each is the manufacturer's best attempt at delivering effective results. We see a few holes here though. Although plants need more of some colors in the red and blue spectrum, some of their biological functions do use other colors of light. A light with only narrow peaks of light in a couple of colors is not going to work well in the grow room. Represented by the lines overlaid onto the spectrum is the absorption percentages for the colors of light needed to produce chlorophyll A, B, and carotenoids within the plant. Ultraviolet and infrared are not represented on this overlay, but botanists know that those colors of light are essential for full plant growth and essential oil production. Chlorophyll A is the most important by far because that's the chlorophyll which manufactures the sugars used in other biological processes and also to build the physical structure of the plant. There are 12 different colors of diodes in the Kind LED light spectrum, including infrared and ultraviolet. So our light is a full spectrum light with all the colors represented, balanced in amounts that are perfect for full sun, fruiting, and flowering plants. Uh, as you can see, we have our highest portion of light delivered as red and deep red light, followed by these peaks in the central and deep blues. 
As shown here in the HPS spectrum, most of the light output is in yellow, of which the plant does not need very much. Besides this wasted light energy and the total lack of blue light, high pressure sodium lighting releases tons of heat for which you have to spend additional wattage costs and equipment costs to exhaust. The reason that lower wattage lights can replace HPS lighting is that they're much more efficient at giving the plant what it needs without wasting energy giving too much light that the plant can't use. This translates into less energy cost and reduces excess heat, which again saves you money and effort to cool your grow room. Using the Sun System PAR meter from NGW, we took measurements at all points on the board at three heights. This can show us both the spread of the light and the way that it diminishes with distance. Kind LED was the front runner overall in average PPFD. Lush came in second place, followed closely by California Lightworks. As you can see in the lower section of our test results, we made an average of the inner ring and the outermost ring of readings so that we could get an idea of which lights had a wider coverage area. And you can see that the light intensity measured at the outer edge of the 4x4 square goes up the most for lights with secondary optics and decreases for the HPS lights as you move the lights farther away. Our light is meant to run at around 36 inches from the canopy to get optimal penetration and coverage area. Of the five lights we tested, three don't use an optic lens. Examining the two that do use the optic, we can clearly see that use of the optic does increase the effectiveness of the diodes over distance. From this graph, it's plain to see that kind central reading and inner ring readings are more intense than any other grow light that we tested. At 24 inches, the outer ring readings at the edge are less intense, as is the case with all of the lights. At 36 inches is the proper distance for the canopy for optimal coverage and light density. So why did the Kyan K5 XL1000 dominate in this competition? Uh, there's a few different reasons. The proprietary 12-band Kyan LED Perfect Spectrum makes our light the most well-balanced and effective spectrum, as you can see here. Using a blend of 3 and 5 watt diodes means you get the best quality of light to your plants with the highest efficiency possible. The secondary optic lens magnifies the PAR readings and more of the light is reaching your plant's leaf surface, increasing photosynthesis. Extra large heat sinks, quiet fans, precision drivers, and superior craftsmanship are quality you can expect from the number one selling LED grow light in the U.S. hydroponic market. Full spectrum digital control allows digital tuning of spectrum to match any plant type at any stage of growth, veg or flower, further increasing efficiency of the light. The light runs by remote control, so you don't have to reach over your plants to adjust your settings. These are features no other grow light offers now. All right, there you have it, our test. Measuring at 24, 36, 48 inches and across the whole board that you can see behind me, Kind LED clearly dominated the results. We have better average power measurements at all the points than any of the other lights. Uh, great spectrum, several features that no other lights offer, including remote controllability, onboard computer, bank of digital timers built into the light. We are stoked to see these results. We are obviously the most powerful LED light in the class, and we have a lot of respect for our competitors, but uh, Kind LED is going to be the best bang for your buck.